Fox and Friends went to Rudy Giuliani for advice for Mitt Romney on running for president again, and his comments are priceless. To Mitt Romney, so if he does engage and jump in for a three-peat, what would you advise him to do differently this go He's, he's going to have to convince his, uh, his big supporters, many of whom have already gone to Bush or Christie, he's going to have to convince them that he's going to run a different kind of campaign this time, that it's going to be a much more aggressive campaign, that it's going to be a much more engaged campaign, that he's not going to back away from top, topics like Benghazi. I think he should have hit even for historical purposes, even if he didn't win. If he had made Benghazi a bigger issue, I think we would have had a better chance. He tried to, but Candy Crowley wouldn't let him. Well, yeah, but no, still, he backed he off it. Yeah, he, he backed, backed off it in the debate, and he shouldn't have. <laughs> he tried, but Candy Crowley, like, fact-checked him live. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> so first of all, going to Rudy Giuliani for advice on running for president is like going to Dick Cheney for advice on morality. Because I don't know if you remember, Rudy Giuliani ran once, and he was leading all of the polls before the primaries started, and then halfway through the primaries, he had a 0% chance of winning. He ran what is arguably the worst political campaign in American history. He famously, like, sat out campaigning in, like, half the fucking states. Like, I was like, hey, Rudy, where are you at? He's like, oh, get me later. I'm, I'm going to go take a nap. He was horrendous. But, of course, Fox and Friends are like, oh, bring on Rudy. Ru Rudy knows everything. Rudy brings up 9-11 every seven minutes, but he also knows everything. Uh, and look at his advice. He should have pushed harder on Benghazi. Rudy, he pushed as hard as possible and he face planted you remember this the president the day after that happened flies to las vegas for political fundraiser the day after the attack governor i stood in the rose garden and i told the american people in the world that we were going to find out exactly what happened yesterday four of these extraordinary americans were killed in an attack on our diplomatic post in benghazi the United States condemns, in the strongest terms, this outrageous and shocking attack. That this was an act of terror. And I also said that we're going to hunt down those who committed this crime. No acts of terror will ever shake the resolve of this great nation. Make no mistake, justice will be done. It's interesting, the President just said something which, which is that on the day after the attack, he went to the Rose Garden and said that this was an act of terror. You said in the Rose Garden, the day after the attack, it was an act of terror. No acts of terror will ever shake the resolve of this great nation. I want to make sure we get that for the record, because it took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me, let me call it an act of Can terror. Can you say that a little louder, Candy? Come on, Mitt, push harder. You should have face planted harder. You should have broken your nose and your eye sockets. This is how deep and how thick that right-wing bubble is. And it's not just on this issue, it's on all issues. I mean, there was a, like what looked like the equivalent of The Daily Show in France. They had this uh, segment the other day where they're ruthlessly mocking Fox News for the whole made-up no-go zones bullshit for non-Muslims aren't allowed in all these places in France. It's so scary. There are no-go zones. There's like over 700 of them. This place sent uh, their workers to the so-called no-go zones, and they started interviewing people. And they're like, fuck are you talking about? They're interviewing non-Muslims in the so-called uh, no-go zone for non-Muslims. And they're like, what do you mean? It's so, their bubble is so thick that the rest of the world knows that they're in a bubble and they're so disconnected from reality. I mean, essentially, Rudy Giuliani's argument is, Benghazi! 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 Okay, but Rudy, if you're gonna bring that up, why, did you look into it? Did you read all the news reports and the articles on it since it happened? Do, are you not following this, but yet you're telling people to talk about it when... You haven't studied it yourself. I mean, there was a New York Times investigative report, 
And the reporters were on the ground for months after the situation happened. And they connected dots, and they followed leads, and they spoke to people who, who saw what happened, and they covered all their bases. And you know what their report uh, concluded? They concluded that the Obama administration's narrative from day one was actually right. And even I said at the beginning, I wasn't sure I bought into the whole narrative about, hey, this was based off a video that was online. It turns out it was. So they were right about it. The investigative report backed it up, and now you know what happened? There was even a GOP committee, one of the Daryl Issa committees, that they were looking for things to prosecute on, right? They're like, we got to find something. Benghazi, Benghazi, we'll find something. Uh, you know what happens? Wah, 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 wah. Found nothing. So there you have it, man. They're simply not interested in the facts. They're too busy regurgitating the nonsense they heard on Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity. It's Benghazi and Fast and Furious and Obama's a socialist and blah, 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 blah. But go ahead, Mitt. Take their advice. You're not going to win anyway, so you might as well not win quickly, and this way you can get out of the race and go back to being a robot.